When I first launched this channel late last year, I started doing some research and I made better YouTube videos and this creator mentioned a guy named Eamon Gardzi, who was a self-help guru who made millions doing this online business. And I watched one of his videos and it was boring as I didn't find it interesting at all. But a couple months in the track in early August, I saw him appear on the Struggle Big podcast with Mark and Kurt Silvery, and I started to understand his story behind him and how his self-improvement journey helped him get to where he was today. And then about a short week later, me and my ex-girlfriend of five years broke up that we started dating at age 14. And at that point, I needed some guidance to get out of a rut. So I had to go to Iman for help. Now, obviously, I'm trying to get this $5,000 prize that Iman's offering to anyone who made a video about him. But I honestly think that some sort of higher power showed me this video and wanted me to make a video on my last three, four month journey of self-improvement and all that and how Iman and other content creators have been instrumental to make me become better and record videos, go to the gym, work harder and all this other stuff just to become a better person and ultimately to fulfill my quest to help as many as possible personal finance, self-improvement and all that other stuff above. But in this video, I want to go over seven pivotal steps that Iman Gazi has taught me about self-improvement. So let's get into it. When I was in my final year of school, I told my English teacher that I would never read a book again. I had no interest in novels. But fast forward almost a year and I watched Iman's three books that made me a millionaire video and that lead me to buy Atomic Habits, Way of Superior Man, and then five others that I saw from other YouTube videos. But he was really the cornerstone that made me step into starting reading. And I'm nearly finished Atomic Habits, which helped me build and delete some of the old habits I have, which I'm gonna go through right now. Because it made me realize why I do everyday things and how big of a play your environment is in affecting your outcomes, your goals, or any other successes in your life. Like for instance, I set my alarm at 6.25 a.m. every morning, but the bad habit I was having was I'd swap my alarm on and off every five minutes. I'd have to set three or four alarms just to wake up in the morning and often I'd be rushing or even late to work. But now I put my phone to the other side of the room, so I have to actually physically stand up and get out of bed and then swipe it off. And by that point, I'm going to fall back asleep. So it gets me up in the morning 100% of the time, and that's how I've changed the habit. I would also spend six to seven hours on TikTok, Instagram, just scrolling through, and also especially YouTube, which was a really bad habit that set in. So I had to make two simple changes, which I'll go through. And the first one is app timers, obviously, which a lot of people do and set screen time. So I'd always have a 45 minute app time for Instagram for like the last year, but then I had to reduce the 30 minutes because honestly, it was too much time. Same as TikTok, 30 minutes, unless obviously I'm creating content or uploading content. Now the other change may seem insignificant, but whenever I place my phone down, I place it face down so I don't see all the notifications or get that quick domain boost of clicking buttons and stuff. So now I've significantly reduced my screen time to just three and a half hours a day, which is a 50% decline of what I was originally doing. And to be honest, about an hour of that is just me at work or during breaks or to be honest, on the toilet. And now I also read a chapter of a book every night just so I can wind down 15 minutes before bed. I plan on doing the same thing indefinitely because I'm constantly changing my belief systems, I'm constantly gaining knowledge, and I've got to thank Amen for that. The next big takeaway I've had over the last two months is short-term satisfaction taken away for long-term accomplishment. It'd be easy to post videos if I knew I was going to get millions of views every day, same as going to the gym if I knew I was getting bigger every day. But that's the thing, it isn't that easy. The reason everyone wants fame, money, status, body, intelligence is because it's not easy to attain. The fundamental laws of supply and demand justify this because everyone wants all these traits that become this lifestyle that everyone desires. However, if it was accessible to everyone, it wouldn't be worth all that much. There's this large body of work that is set as the foundation for your character where you may not be getting all these clicks and likes that you think you deserve. You may not be getting physically fitter. Your business may not be making money. Everyone is doing better than you and it makes you truly appreciate all the work you did beforehand when it does all come. There's a larger area of time where you know ROI on your work and it really tests your mental strength and integrity because you just feel like wanting to give up or quit early. Because much easier you just have an average lifestyle and just sit at home and watch Netflix every night. But it's that commitment after the motivation is lost that the discipline kicks in and the greats succeed. So if you're in this gray area right now, the strong truly do break through, but it's depending on how you define yourself as either the strong man who wants to break through or the average Joe that just sits at home and does nothing and becomes average for the rest of their life. Now, I saw a TikTok email posted and it goes just like this. Entrepreneurship is just like weight loss. Think about it this way. Will working out and eating well for one day make any difference to you? Not at all. It's the same with entrepreneurship. One day of working hard in your business won't make any difference. It's all about consistency, perseverance, and building a habit out of it. Now, not just entrepreneurship, but really anything you want to pursue. If you get 1% better every day and stand that out across a year, you get 37 times better due to the compounding effect. When I first started working at McDonald's, I knew nothing about working in the kitchen and during my orientation, I had zero clue what I was doing. 
But over the first three weeks, you learn three different stations in the kitchen and you start getting these newfound skills, you start stacking them on top of each other and eventually across the whole year, you become so much better than you originally were. And those who apply themselves just a little bit more, keep stacking up those skills and then learn different areas of restaurants, start becoming the managers, the corporate people, the owners, etc. But again, you go from understanding nothing to understanding a lot because same with me and Jim when I was 17, I rocked up to my local one and I knew nothing I was doing. I had no form, I had no understanding, I had no knowledge of how the body works and that's okay. And it looks stupid at first, but as soon as you start learning bit by bit and you start practicing, 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 you start getting better and start understanding more. It only takes about three months. Same with boxing. I didn't really know what I was doing. Started learning some more form, some more technique, and then started getting faster, stronger, and better. And then now I can somewhat box. Somewhat. In fact, if you look at the first video on my channel, I, oh, what was it called? It was something about compound interest. I think I just demonstrated the effects of it. But you look at that first video, it's absolutely horrendous to watch. I knew nothing about camera angles, knew nothing about lighting. I was editing on Movie Maker, the thing you had in like, uh, 2012 and yeah I knew nothing I was doing but I started learning editing and started doing better YouTube videos and I've come a long way in the last year but of course I have a long way to go. Nonetheless though it's very easy to come crashing down because hypothetically it's a scenario if you can lift 100 kilo bench press and you go from that to 150 kilos in a year that's a 50% increase and you've done very well across that year. However, it only takes a 33% decrease to go back down 100 kilos so it's very very easy to go that quick decline down and all come crashing down and be at the same place as you were a year ago. Now it's maybe because you stopped working out, you started eating unhealthy, you started drinking more day to day, you started smoking, whatever that unhealthy habit is, you gotta notice these little changes and put a stop to them before they start affecting your life. Because it's easier to slump back into old habits and stop progressing it throughout your life to the purpose you wanna fulfill. It might also explicitly say in a video that the people who are designer brands are often middle to lower class, they're not comfortable in their own skin, they have no body underneath and Hence believe that they have to act wealthier in front of friends and family to be accepted by society, essentially. I say friends loosely though, because a true friend frankly doesn't care what you wear and instead shows true companionship through loyalty and honesty. Loyalty demonstrate they'll stick through thin and thin for you no matter what outside threats happen. And are honest enough that they can sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you about anything, no matter if it's serious or not. And give impartial feedback on advice that may even hurt you, but it's the truth. But back to clothing, I've started to build a style that is just simple, flat colors that fit well on the body. And then you can build a style around that depending on the weather. And I say that, but I'm wearing a shirt that is not a simple flat color because it's 30 degrees outside. So it's a bit warm for that. Don't try so hard wearing these fancy brands. Build a style that fits around your character. Don't waste your money on these big logo items or these big brands or spend so much time picking all these bullshit items anyway. Anyway, the fifth lesson I've taken away from me is to show up on your worst days. A couple of days I was in a car crash and no one was injured luckily, but obviously it makes you imagine that if you were just in the wrong place where you or a loved one were, it could have been fatal. So of course, sometimes you think that, you know, you know on this planet long, you are really sickly dodging death every single day. So you gotta make the most of every opportunity you have and make the most of life. So I wanna segue this. Picture yourself in three months, six months, a year's time that even on these worst days where you're worse off, you don't have a good day. You still show up, you still do whatever makes you happy, you still pursue the business you want to run, you still pursue the career you want to have, you still go to the gym and still work out that body that you want to have, you still do everything that you want. And although this accident happened, I still did the same workout I do every day religiously. I still scripted the video that I'm recording right now. I still went to bed and woke up the next day and went to work. I still read the book that I read every night. Because you may be curious about what life is like when you take it seriously. You say yes to opportunities and say no to all the distractions that come with it. Because in that time frame, you'll exceed everything you've imagined. We overestimate what can be done in 10 weeks, but underestimate what could be done in um, 10 years, so just think about that. The successful people in this world don't strive just when they feel like it. Success isn't bred from genetics, talent, luck, opportunity, but rather those that show up when it's just boring work. You do the same repetition of work every single day you've done for the last year, maybe even decade, I don't know, but you continue to do it because you know one day it will present opportunity, a gateway to the better life you want. So showing up consistently, even on the days you don't want to work, will push you way ahead of the people who show up only half the time. Now, something that's very similar to showing up is obviously hard work. Now, if I had to break down my average week, 
Monday, I wake up at 6.25, like I said, go to work, come home at 3.30, eat some food because I had a full day. I go back to work again at Macca's and then I come home, do a little bit for this video, not too much, but then I do an hour, hour and 15 work session that I do every single day. Go to bed. Tuesday, I do the exact same thing, but I don't work at Macca's. I just come home, eat a little bit more, then record these videos, then work out, and then I do the same thing. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then Saturday nights, I just generally go out and do some of my mates and then Sunday I got basketball and obviously there's some family events that surround that but every single day I always do the workout I always script record edit something for these videos whether it's a TikTok or a full length video like this now the easiest thing to do is just give up I don't feel like going to work I don't always feel like going to the gym I enjoy it but I don't feel like doing it I don't feel like making these videos all the time because I know personally it's hard uploading these videos and saying I got nothing out of it realistically or working out, keep my body and mind in shape, but day to day realizing it means nothing. But what's the hardest thing is getting up the next day and saying I'm gonna go even harder than the day before, even if it means I'm in the same position as I was yesterday. Although mentally I'm trying and trying just for a glimpse of hope that I'm heading in the right direction. Realistically, day to day it means nothing, but over the long term, as it stacks on top of each other, I know eventually it all come to fruition, everything I want. So that's why I keep doing it. I get feedback from friends from high school that I haven't really seen in a while. It may have been even a year. And they mention quickly that they've seen my videos on TikTok generally because it comes up for them. And they say they find it pretty inspirational and or at least interesting. Maybe someone I don't know in the comments, maybe it's you, the person watching this right now that I actually don't know personally. And you tell me that these videos help you in some form and that little bit of hope is what keeps me doing this. And bring it back to Eamon, he's mentioned that he's felt the same feeling. So therefore I know at least I'm somewhat on the same path to help as many people as I can worldwide. And that's what I truly do this for. I do it for you guys. It's not for myself. It's for the enjoyment and the hope of making a better change for the world. Now, become the 1% isn't quick. <laughs> I, I want to pivot as soon as I can from that. I know how long Eamon was doing these videos for as a hobby. And also, he's also the business and the self-improvement journey. It took years. And he's previously said that he started this pursuit of status and fame at age 14 by learning some skills. And eventually by 21, grew a business, study people, build a physique, and many more things that consider himself as a top 1% man. Now, 22, he's trying to inspire the younger generation. And <laughs> I say that, but he's young himself, obviously. And then press the thought to escape the matrix and become this renaissance man. This trek isn't a short one, it's hard and brutal, and it will take years, maybe even decades, but I know for a fact that any person who puts that amount of energy in the universe, the universe rewards them with an infinite amount of success and achievement of their dreams, even that they surpass, and you'll climb mountains you didn't even know existed. It is all about building an identity that attracts people, and not just people, but people on the right path that can help guide you to this paradise. Building that business you're so passionate about, conquering the world with your status, fame, money that you've acquired over the years, building that physique and body that you've always wanted and strive for, maybe even attract the girl that once upon a time you thought was impossible to impress. But that's the best part about reaching all these goals, there's always more. And that's the final note I want to leave this video, keep striving, keep growing, and I hope this video somewhat inspires you to take the first step to do something you really want to do. Now looking at this video turned out, thank you Imagazi for sending this challenge and it's not about the money, I've really enjoyed making this video and demonstrate some of the personal growth stuff I've been doing and I hope there's some important points to take away out of this but anyway, like and subscribe, heading out.